welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, I am going to be giving an inside scoop into what it was like working for the Edmonton Oilers Orange and Blue Ice Crew. Okay guys, so first I'm going to show you our community outfit here. I don't have that outfit that we would wear to the games anymore because we had to give that back. But this is what we would wear out in the community. So I wore it to the Glen Rose children's party. Um, I would wear it at other events. Um, we didn't usually wear this one, but this is the one that I have left. And so I thought it would be fun to shoot the orange and blue ice crew inside scoop video with this outfit on. So. I want to first talk about how I joined the team and what kind of led me to be a part of the Edmonton Oilers Orange and Blue Ice Crew. So for me, it was kind of a fluke. I didn't even know about the auditions. And yes, there were auditions that you had to go to to get on the team. Uh, I actually just had a friend over one night for drinks in my parents' hot tub because uh, at the time it was 2017, so I was sort of living at my parents, sort of living at my boyfriend's house. But anyways, I just had a friend over and she was telling me about these auditions for the Edmonton Oilers ice crew. And I was not sure about it, but she really wanted to go. And the more she talked about it, the more I thought, okay, this might be cool. So I decided I would go to the auditions with her. And it was exciting because this was the first season that the Oilers would be playing at Rogers Place. And so I just wanted to, you know, see what it was like. And then I went to the auditions. They were really easy. Basically, they just asked you a couple of questions in a group setting. And then I got a call that I was on the team. Now, uh, for me... I was going to be an off ice ice girl because I actually can't really skate in hockey skates, which is bad because I'm a Canadian, but whatever. Um, and so there was actually a couple girls that were just off ice ice girls. And then there was some that would kind of flip back and forth. So with the off ice girls, we would be, we would do all the same things as the other girls, except for actually shovel the ice. Um, so mostly what I would do were like the t-shirt tosses or other in-game activities around the bowl and that was kind of my main role. Um, so yeah, it was just sort of a fluke and so I joined and it honestly ended up being one of the best experiences of my entire life. I have so many fun memories. They're kind of random and I still like one of my like best friends is um, from the team who I met there. Her name's Allie. Shout out to you, Allie, even though you live in Vancouver now. Um, but yeah, no, it's been, it was just like an amazing experience. And obviously that was like the playoff year and all of those girls and guys that were on the team, um, they are all just gems. Like I absolutely love each and every single one of them. And if I saw any of them today, I would just probably give them a hug. Um, but yeah, no, let's, let's get into the details a little bit more. So one of the best benefits about being on the team was actually the food that we got while working there. So we would go in, we would enter through the staff room and then when you, or the staff entrance, and then when you go in, you just kind of go to your left and for $5, $5, you would get like a legit dinner like it was awesome it would be like chicken parmesan with like veggies and salad and dessert or it would be like a roast beef night or lasagna like it was the food was so good and it was just five dollars which like is honestly a steal of a deal and this wasn't just for um the orange and blue ice crew it was for like all staff at rogers place so that was really awesome um one of the best parts too, so usually you would go in, so before your shift would start, you actually paid for about an hour, maybe a little bit longer to be there before you have to kind of be out on the concourse interacting with the fans. And during that hour, it was like, it was just like an hour of hanging out with friends in our dressing room, I suppose. Um, during that hour, we would get our makeup done by makeup artists. And the, the thing is, you're only in that chair with the makeup artist for about like five minutes. You're not there for very long. Like you still have to come there with most of your makeup and stuff done, but they would like 
maybe do your eyeliner or put on your fake lashes or like whatever you needed. So then you would have those kind of five minutes in the chair with the makeup artist, maybe another five, 10, just fixing yourself up. And then the rest of that time you were just like hanging out with all your friends. So it would like that part was really, really fun. Another part that was fun, I guess, was like we would just have these passes with us at all times and we could kind of go anywhere. So like we would get to go see stuff kind of like in the basement, I guess. Well, where you see the girls coming um, onto the rink to skate, there's like a whole back area there. That's where like the Oilers dressing room is and stuff. And so we would have to like walk by the Oilers dressing room a lot, except for there was definitely strict rules where there were certain times like we could not be in that area because they didn't want us to like obviously see the players or be hanging out there and like, which is totally understandable. Um, but so we did have access to like most parts of the building, which was really cool. So we could go into like the private areas. And I mean, that's what they wanted, right? Like we were there to interact with the fans, but it's just kind of fun. Like you felt special. Like you, you felt like, I don't know, you just were important. You had this access card. So I liked that part about it as well. The pay was actually pretty good too. We got paid like $25 an hour. And for me at the time, like I had only worked at a shopper's drug mart beauty boutique before that. And so I was just used to getting paid minimum wage. And so $25 an hour for me was like really good. Now I wanna talk about the outfits a little bit more because obviously like this isn't the one that you see the girls wearing at the game. We would be wearing the crop tops and whatnot. And it was kind of, that was one thing that not all of us on the orange and blue ice crew agreed on like some girls didn't like wearing those outfits and felt like i don't know maybe not as comfortable with it which is completely understandable uh for me personally like i didn't really care about the outfits being a crop top like i actually kind of loved it which maybe i like which maybe my aunts and, and my grandma and my mom and stuff wouldn't want me to say that, but I felt like so beautiful and so confident in my outfit. Like I do feel like, you know, everyone at the Oilers wanted us to feel that way. Um, and so I don't know, like for me, the outfits weren't an issue necessarily. Uh, and I think that a lot of other girls liked them too, especially the newer ones these days that I see them wearing. Like, I think that they just keep getting better and better. The first ones that we had, they were like, they were pretty gross. They're not at all like the ones you see now. We actually didn't even have them for the full season. We had them for like maybe the first couple weeks. And then I think even the Oilers people recognize like, okay, these are not the greatest. And the other thing too, when it comes to like the crop tops and the reason why the Oilers wanted to go that way i think is because they were following industry standard so like the other um nhl ice girls those were the similar outfits that they would wear and so they were just following industry standard and so yeah i don't know that was like my experience with outfits it was fine i, I liked them um, now a lot of people probably wonder do we get to talk to the players or like what is our interaction level with the players now the one like strictest rule I think the Oilers had was like there was a zero tolerance policy for conversing with the players at all whatsoever. And now they, I felt like it was almost to an extreme. Like there was this one um, time I can remember it was um, at the Glen Rose children's party. And this was actually a volunteer thing to do. Like we weren't actually paid for this event, but I decided to like volunteer as an ice girl for it. And um, we were told that some, maybe like two or three Oilers players would be there as well. Don't like talk to them. And so I was kind of like, whatever, like they're probably gonna be off signing autographs and, and whatever, like I'll just be doing whatever I was told to do. But what actually ended up happening was, uh, so like the kids would come, we would be in this room and it was like a, almost a playroom for the kids and they'd be coloring or playing with toys and we would be there to play with the kids as well. And we got there before the Oilers got there. And then um, when the Oilers got there, they actually just like joined in the room with us and started playing with the kids. And so I, the only person I remember being there with me was Ryan Nugent Hopkins. 
And um, I remember him like sitting down literally at the same table as me and it was a small table. And I mean, it was small cause it was like a kid's table and like coloring with kids. And I think I just said like, hello, but my bosses were there and I was like legitimately afraid just to talk to him because I thought I was gonna get in trouble. And so I just kind of focused on the kids, but really when you think about this, it's kind of ridiculous that we can't even talk to like a human being sitting beside me. But those were the rules at the time. It was like a huge zero tolerance policy. And so it was me and a couple other ice girls on the team at this event. And then there was also, um, a photo booth company there who weren't with the Oilers and something kind of like weird happened there too. So this photo booth company that was there, they said to me, to Florette and um, Ryan Nugent Hopkins, they said, hey, like, can you come take a photo of the three of you together? We want to use it on our website. And I remember me and Flo, we were just like, not sure. We kind of gave each other a look, but we were like, yeah, like, let's go for it, whatever. Um, so we took this photo and, um, we actually got in trouble for taking a photo with Ryan and the photo company wasn't even allowed to use that photo on their website. The other kind of interesting thing actually is people would try to give us money sometimes almost, almost as like a tip. Like I would have guys come up to me sometimes with like, tw like shake my hand with like a $20 bill in it. And I just thought that was the weirdest thing I would, and like, did they think that we were serving them? No, like obviously not. We weren't handing out drinks or anything like that. And so it was just super weird that people would try to give us money sometimes. I, I, that, I didn't get that at all. And I never took it because I just, that wasn't something I was gonna do at all. Um, but that was also a really weird thing that would happen that maybe some people wouldn't think about. There was also another time I was in an elevator and it was, I think I was getting off on like one of the VIP floors, but while we were in the elevator, um, the Oilers scored and this was during playoff season and there was a guy in there that was like pretty drunk and he said to me, he was like, if you can tell me the player that just scored, um, I'll give you $10,000. And a part of me thought he was like somewhat serious. Like this guy looked rich, like the shoes he had on and, and he also seemed drunk. Um, but you know what? There was there was definitely no TVs in the elevators at that time. I don't know if there is now, but I like I had no idea who just scored the goal. So I I guessed randomly and I was wrong. So I'll never find out if I would have got that ten thousand dollars. If I had to think of like the top two things that I gained from the experience, I think the first would just be, um, I don't know, like, I guess the experience overall, it's something, it's a memory I can look back on. Like I was a part of this team when the Oilers went into playoffs. It was like the year where the orange crush was happening and like, uh, just the energy in Edmonton and in Rogers place was so crazy. So to be a part of that on a level where you're engaging with the fans, it's an experience you're probably never gonna forget. And also again, like, I just think that the people that I worked with on the orange and blue ice crew, like, I don't think that I'm ever gonna work with a better group of people in my whole life. So I'm just so thankful for that time. I'm actually really sad that I don't see them anymore. Like I honestly, I would love to have like a reunion party or something. So obviously I was only on the Edmonton Oilers orange and blue ice crew for one season. And the reason why I didn't go back for the second season was partly just because in a way I felt like, um, you know, I was close to finishing up school and whatnot. And it is like a great job, but I just didn't know if it spoke uh, as to like the profession I wanted to go into. Um, and so I kind of just wanted to move on and try and get something different. And so I ended up getting a job at a office instead. And it was like, it was a job that paid less, but it added to my resume in a way that the Edmonton Oilers Orange and Blue Ice crew couldn't. And I just sort of felt like, you know what, it was an experience that I had and I didn't really need to like go through it again. Like it was just one of those things where I did it. It was amazing, but I didn't feel the need or the desire to necessarily go back. And um, 
I'm glad I didn't. I do think that as fun as it was, it's one of those things, you know, it's you do it when you're young. And I mean, I'm still young. Like I'm only 24 now. I was like 21 or something at the time when I was on that team. But it just wasn't something I felt like I needed to do anymore. Okay, guys, I think that's it. I can't really think of anything else that was too interesting or I guess worth mentioning. But yeah, that's kind of my take on the season. The one season I was on the Edmonton Oilers Orange and Blue Ice Crew and kind of all the, I guess, interesting things I think maybe people would want to know. Um, but if there is anything else that you think of, you can always, you know, leave a comment and ask and I will answer. And remember to like and subscribe to my, like my video and subscribe to my channel so that you know, I keep making more fun videos like this. And if you want to follow me on Instagram, I would love that as well. So thank you and bye.